I wanted to say a little more about Apple culture, okay? Now, the people that work at Apple are interesting people. They're great geeks. They're nothing like the Apple, the community of Apple customers. Now, there's a lot of Apple customers. They're not all in, like, typical parts of this community. There's sort of a, a zealot aspect to the Apple community. You know what I'm talking about. And it's not really a part of a living at Apple. Uh, working at Apple, rather. Freudian slip. So, um, yeah, the people at Apple are really cool. I mean, think about, for example, this. Moving over to Intel machines, you have to understand, engineering-wise, Spark was still better. The only reason to leave Spark, go to Intel the chips, was because the market had taken over and because of this mass of Intel chips, the influence of copycats and whatnot, um, they had to move over and the machines have become overheating messes. It's the main problem with the machines. This is Anyway, I don't even want to get into that. Apple users probably never would have done that. They're like, no, it's right to do We're going to use Betamax. You know, that's where they're tending to go. So Apple itself is not like that. So on the other hand, they love jobs there. And yet, see, they're, they're geeks and they're realists. And they're like, uh, I don't think many Apple employees would deny the part about where I'm saying, but he's also kind of an asshole. But he's like, he's the asshole that laid the golden egg. And not just if you like gold, but if you like, you know, beautiful things. You know, it's like, you could not care about gold and go, this golden egg is beautiful. It happens to be made of gold. I'm not impressed by that, but the rest of it is also awesome. So, I mean, the skill he really offers is that there's not many, let's just say by principle that all the business types are kind of asshole -y things going on there, you know, personality, tendencies, and complexes that we might think of that way. But the thing is, when someone has this design sense, uh, that's exactly what a good programmer needs. They, they have a sort of a, a, an appreciation of design, not an ability. They lack people like jobs that have a, a, an ability for design, not an ability for engineering per se, but an appreciation of it. Because this helps the engineer a lot, because then the engineer is like, oh, I need to make something that fits into this little sub-concept in the way it should work from the user's point of view. And he provides a user's point of view that that the engineer can connect with, and they can provide something that then, you know, makes technology good. On the other hand, I'm not a big fan of Apple right now. Like I said, I'm using some of their products, but I hate, you know, like I have an Android phone. If I want to put music on there, I plug it in. It looks like a USB stick, and I copy my songs on there. Whereas with my, you know, iPod, iPad, I, you know, iPhones, I don't have one myself. My girlfriend has an iPhone. You know, you plug that sucker and it's like, do you want to erase it and put everything this machine owns officially on it or what? So, what, what? No, I wanted to put that song I made myself in GarageBand. Will you have to export it to iTunes? Okay, I'll export it to iTunes. Well, you can't put it on anybody else's machine. You can't give it to some anybody else. I mean, I can't put a song I wrote on my iPhone or iPod and take it and put it on someone else's machine. Are you freaking kidding me? I mean, that would be okay if it was hard to do, but the machine could do that by default. They had to do work to make it not able to do that. So I don't like that. You know, if Apple ran the show instead of Microsoft, we'd have a lot better engineering to use, but it'd probably be even worse because they'd just be more competent at being controlling bastards. I mean, Microsoft tries things like that that always, you know, somebody gets around them pretty much. And, but Apple has kept controlling up the whole time, so that's my problem with them, and that's a that's you know that's Jobs' influence. So maybe a good thing about this is if they, if they can if they if he has seeded enough of this design sense and the rest to really get it, and they're not going to get you know another Pepsi exec in there, and they can keep that momentum going, they might actually improve because there's a lot of people at Apple that are more pro open source than. Uh, and, and just uh, like this modern sense of computing that we're into, some of us, um, than Jobs was. So anyway, hopefully that balances out my opinion a little bit. I just felt I needed to get the other side because uh, as much as I miss Jobs and there's a nostalgia now, I can't forget you know the, the wholeness of my opinion. 
but I stand by everything in the first video for sure. He's a, some kind of a genius at design and communicating with engineers, and uh, he'll be sorely missed by Apple. And uh, you know, Apple's important influence is an important influence in the computing world that I, I really hope we don't lose. I mean, that's why we have USB and all kinds of stuff in the PC world. It's like, well, it's because Apple could introduce it, prove it was awesome, PC makers start using it, and then that's the only way to make a standard is through people voluntarily adopting it in the PC world. So this kind of dynamic is pretty good so for us and um, yeah all right happy computing <laughs>